Charlotte here again. Right, now we're going to have a little look at doing some really quick and easy grass and sort of fields, thinking about the, uh, the scale. So what kind of grass you want to do, how far away it is. And then I'll just demonstrate uh, some large leaves, a bit like um, New Zealand flax. So you can see how to blend and get a really nice smooth blend when something's really, really close up as well. So perhaps not the blades of grass, but some really big leaves. So all of this is being done with the very simple uh, primary palette that we use in class, plus white. And I'm just going to start out with some grass that's really far away. Now, none of this has to feel complicated. It's just a matter of understanding what it is you're looking at. So all of my students, you will know, I say so regularly, what can you see? What is it that you can see in the painting? And especially when it's something like grass, where you've got a very dense object, and there's lots of individual blades of grass, and it's thinking about the, the light that you can see across the grass, and also getting that um, textural look, and thinking, even if you're looking at your fingers, that it's like layers of layers of lots of little fingers, and you can't see the roots, you can only see the tips. So it's working from the back and doing lots of layers, so you're just ending up looking at the, the tops of the, the grass. Even if it's very far away, it's worth working out just a little pattern. So you're always working from the back of your painting forwards. Now you can do this with actually quite a big brush. It's really, really simple to do. And uh, Think about maybe three or four layers of, of colour. So I'm going to start with my first layer of grass. Let's assume it's green, that it's not been too dry a summer. Adding a little bit of red into the blue and some of our, our favourite liquid white, white, liquid yellow that we have in class, which can be very annoying in a palette sliding around the bottom there in the corner. Now I've just made up a, a really sort of deep purpley blue tone from those three primaries and just sort of spread it off on your uh, your big brush a little bit so it's not too wet and you might be able to see that it's just splaying the, the bristles just slightly. Now this is just a, a canvas that I prepared earlier with a, a soft overall green underneath so you want to make sure that you've painted in the whole area that you want to do with grass with an under coat, probably a green tone, just to help you figure out where all the grass is going to go. So let's just say that there are going to be some grasses far away. Now even just doing that instantly changes the texture of what we're looking at from a very smooth surface to straight away being saying to your eye, oh my goodness, right, there must be something textured happening there because of all the little lines and edges that are creating that sense of spike. And I'm just doing short layers, quite literally feeling like I'm filling in those, those rows of grass, even though the colour is the same and I'm going over, I'm just doing very little movements down, very light movements down with the brush. I'll zoom in on this afterwards so you can see it more closely, but it's great to be able to look at it from a distance and see the effect that it has. So I'm just going to do some small areas of this. So just little strokes down like that. But all the time I'm starting halfway through the previous row of grass, so I'm never letting the roots be seen, if that makes sense. Now I'm just filling in here and there. You don't want to get too much into a typewriter mode where you're just going on doing stripes. You want to make sure that you're filling in each of the gaps. Okay, I've separated that a little bit so you can really see what was, what was happening. And then from this, just dab off your brush and go for a, a much brighter green. So just blue and yellow, no red this time. And again, you want to dab off your brush because if you're doing something which is quite far away, you still want to be able to see the, the little the textural elements rather than just filling it up with, with quite a, a globby brush. And then I'm just going to start stroking over the top. Now the, the dark colour that I put in first, that of course creates all of the, the, the elements of shadow in between all of the, the blades of grass. 
So you're building up little layers of different variations of, of greens. And as I'm always saying in class, you know, it becomes that conversation between light and dark that you might find that you overdo one of the elements so that it all becomes too much the same tone and then you can just go back in with with your light or your dark so you see even just having a few little lines here and there in a far away field straight away the eye understands that this is textured there's definitely some quite straight crops or grass or something happening there now to make a much lighter layer remember that when you're lightening green you don't just want to add white because it can make it look very minty and misty. You want to have the yellow in there to warm it up. If you are in fact making a, a warm green, of course, make sure you're just getting rid of some of the globs. And this can then always just have a little look at the brush just to make sure what's on there before you, before you put it on. And just, you see, now adding in those little strokes of light because we've put the layers underneath first of all, we get a real sense of depth. And now there's just a bit of sun hitting the tops. If you get a very uh, harsh line with the brush, it doesn't matter. You can just stroke over it or of course, just add in some darker colors. It doesn't take long to redo the process. And you can see how effective that can be now getting that sense of movement in the grass. Maybe there's a little bit of, of uh, wind blowing them slightly, just creating a little bit of a blur. But the eye picks up on the light. You see all of the, the light that's hitting the blades of grass, but it's the earlier layers which create the depth and that, that realism of, of what's happening there. So you see how that can be for far away grasses. That's just incredibly effective. Just doing those few layers and of course you can change the the colors that you're wanting to do depending on the light depending on what it is that's that's spiky and remember of course that this is exactly the same technique for anything which is dense but has very small spiky elements so grass uh, of course hair fur on an animal this is a perfect way to do that always starting with your, your deeper under color and then gradually lightening and using the, the, the brush to get that sense of the, the direction of the, the spikes. And you might find, as I said before, you need to go back in with a little bit more light. Now I'm just gonna change my brush and show that if another really good way to do it is if you've got quite a, an old sort of scrubby brush or one of these bristle brushes, you can even sort of chop into it with scissors. <laughs> to create uh, quite a variety of, of, of long bristles and thin bristles. And these are really, really good for getting much more wild, long grass look. So again, I'm just gonna start with, you can even hear it on the plastic palette. That's a, that's a scrubby old brush. Now you see how that is already splayed. Now this, starting from the back again, you see how I'm doing my next layer, sort of part way through the, the first layer. You need a little bit more. It dries out quite quickly when you're using thin amounts. And the key here is the light pressure. So I'm just pressing very lightly, so I'm stroking the, the paint just on there. If you press really hard, if you have a good brush like this, where it's already splayed apart, then it works really, really well. But if you're using a more solid brush like I was for this, you will just get a, a solid, solid block. So stroking together all of those different layers, then adding in a little bit of light over the top. You see how that just suddenly starts popping out. Such a quick way to, to do it. This really doesn't have to be complicated and, and difficult. It's, it's just working out the order in which to do the layers and working out what can you see. That can sometimes be the hardest aspect of doing painting because just being able to figure out that there are layers of shadow underneath 
and to do those first and then to add the light that can be quite a, a complex process i'm just adding more white in there remember to offset the white with a little bit of yellow and just to get those really some really bright light bits of, of grass just going now again just be careful not to make too much of a potato print pattern when you're doing these but now we've got a definite sense of everything going in one direction you've got some layering and that was clearly done very very quickly you can of course build up far more layers of light and so I'm just going to zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it more closely because you've seen it from a distance and how effective that can be and when you look at it closely you see it's, it really is just a series of lines and dashes and dabs so it's a very very effective way of approaching this subject yeah and those are very very easy and and just remember not to not to worry about how you're getting the effect it's being able to see how effective it is when you just learn a simple a simple technique so now i just want to uh, remind you if you've been in my classes before just about how to approach doing, say, a couple of large leaves and an easy blend to get really soft, smooth transition. And again, just before I move on, you see this would be a great way as well to do hair. It's thinking about the, the brush and working from underneath to the surface with, with hair, with anything which is remotely like grass. So these techniques transfer across absolutely everything put a brush in the water don't want that to dry out now even using quite a big big brush so for my regular students this is the number 20 green brush that's always in your jar and i'm just going to remind you about doing a a really nice blend we're going to stick with the greens now if you wanted to create a, a large piece a couple of pieces of flax and start with your your middle tone so let's go for a you know, middle green and this is the part that i think causes some confusion or difficulty is just making sure you've got enough on the brush so if i create a really nice smooth shape entirely with that that brush and let's have one which is bent over as well because there's very often those broken pieces or they just bend over a little bit you see how I'm just twisting the flat brush to get a fine point down here and of course it's the light adding in the light which is going to make it really clear with what's happening there so you start with your middle tone then you add your dark and you add your light so it depends what you've got on what colors you're working with really and what you've got on your palette as to which way you go first and the chances are you're probably going to need to do a couple of layers because as soon as you start mixing your light into these because there's so much blue in which is such a powerful pigment you might need to do a, a few layers but let's say okay the light is coming from above and i'm going to add in just take one of my light greens you see already just with the blue that's on the brush how much that stains and changes the the light green so i just need to make some more now flax is quite it varies loads in color but i'm going to just use the same tones that i was using in the grass just to demonstrate the transition of light and dark so i've got a really it doesn't matter if you've got quite a mix on there because mixing the the paint into the wet green here is already going to create some variation and i want to have a nice smooth blend so i want to use quite a lot of, of paint so i'm starting at the top I'm thinking about the the light so you can see as I press in how much it blends down already and then just do a couple of stripes in and you're getting that because of course my brush is picking up the green that's underneath and transferring it mixing it in so you're basically using your canvas as your mixing palettes but you're just doing it live as it were you're doing it directly on your painting so 
but I just want to get rid of that bright line that's on the outside but sometimes having a line on the outside can be really really strong and, and powerful so that you see how nicely that has blended in now it hasn't created too much transition on there yet but I actually want to make sure I'm getting enough light now on this one here I'm thinking about the the light hitting the top of the flax all right so where it bends over there'll be a shape like this perhaps this one is in front got to think about the order in which these grasses are so it's going to come down like that actually that will come let's take that all the way across here now just make sure you wipe off your brush or get a clean brush to add in more light and I would say even taking just the pure white just very very lightly mix it in with your green because we know how strong those pigments are and again still using the same big brush going along and again blending in at that mid point where the light is meeting with the darker shadow and if you start to get stripes like that you can keep blending with the brush or just do a little bit of a soft finger smudge because the paint is quite thick and wet so it allows me to get a lot of a movement in there and I know it's not going to, to dry for a while and the same over here so we've thought about the order in which the that this leaf is definitely in front of the that one the first one I did and just using the wet paint underneath to get that smooth blend and taking your time you see how slowly I'm doing those those strokes so each of those strokes that if you go quite fast it's going to mix in and the, the heat that you create when you're mixing in fast is going to dry up the, the paint much more quickly because just because of the friction that you, that you generate, the heat that you generate from fast brush strokes. So sometimes just take your time with it, have a little bit of patience. Now I'm going to just swap over to another brush, so exactly the same size, but I don't want to have any, any light on it this time. And I'm going to use Mix Up an even darker green. I'm not adding any red into this, just blue, tiny bit of yellow. And I'm going to start with this one at the, the back. All right, and just starting again at the top, bringing the line down. Now, if you're building this up correctly, of course, you would entirely have done this back flax leaf, this back stalk first, because we want to make sure we've got a crisp line of light coming down in front here. But that's very, very easy for me to correct, of course. Now here, I'm thinking that the angle of this needs to be a little bit different with the way that that's coming over. I want this to be nice and dark because it's quite shaded. So this is where I'm adding just a touch of red in touch of red adding in a little bit of yellow there so I get a really good deep purple shadow color coming underneath and then the flax again just twisting twisting the brush there at the point where it's bending over and we're going to come back with the light now I can see that actually what I needed to do was to make that flat across there, didn't I? And because I'm looking at it from the side, I didn't notice that. So this is where, you know, so adding in the shadows can often be the, the key where you start to realise, well, hang on, that shape doesn't look right. So always trust your eye. If your eye is telling you that something doesn't look quite right, it's because it isn't. So the fold would need to be there, and then that allows me to change the light. So I wanted to make this area here really really nice and dark we've still got a very clear stripe there so this is where you just you need to just keep going back and forth I've got my previous brush getting a little bit, bit of that 
light green again, back and forth over the line that you've just done. So this is where the blending happens. You take your, you start with your middle tone, add some light, add some dark, and then over the line where you've just added your fresh paint, that's where you go back and forth just to blend it, soften it in. And the harder you press, the more the paint's going to mix. And remember just that little bit of back and forth, adding in all the different colors. Perhaps a little bit of red comes through because sometimes the flax have, have some dark tones in there. Some reds, reds coming out, just a little bit of the purpley blue tone. And because you're mixing with the paints wet, you will get some really, really soft blending happening. All right, always when it's wet, and that's when you get the really, really nice supple blends. Okay, now of course, this blending technique is applicable for absolutely anything that you're doing where you want to have a smooth transition or where you're struggling a little bit with how to get the the supple blend, it was like when we did the sky with the, the white paint underneath first and you add in the colours. This is exactly the same process by starting with an under colour that's still wet and then you add lighter and darker sections and you get these lovely transitional tones from light to dark. And you can just keep working on that, adding in the colours that you want, the tones that you want and being able to edit and, and change the shapes as you go. It's all told through the shadows. Okay, so hopefully that helps with a few little reminders about uh, perspective. So the size of the brush marks when something's really far away compared to close up, and then how to get some really nice soft shapes and changing blending. All right, now it's your turn. Have some fun, see ya.